Hello, and uh, thank you very much for coming today uh, to this presentation of the series that I'm doing here in Northboro at the uh, library. My name is Arthur Bergeron. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I work at Myrick O'Connell. There are uh, 70 of us there at Myrick O'Connell, 70 lawyers, and we do all kinds of things because there are so many of us and so everybody gets to specialize, so I get to do this, which is elder law. Um, Thank you for coming to this presentation. I also want to apologize to folks who were originally thinking they were, were, were going to do, which was what I wanted to do originally, a presentation about Medicare Advantage plans, so-called Medicare C or Medicare Advantage plans. I had wanted a guest from one of the Advantage plans to come to talk about that today, and then realized when I went to call them that, of course, this is the enro open enrollment period, so they are all stretched out. So. Um, what, I, what I wanted to do instead is I flipped this with another presentation that I was going to do in the spring to talk to you about um, your options if you are, you are at home and you're frail. And there were really kind of two kinds of options that I wanted to talk about. I wanted to ask my friend Christine Alessandro who runs uh, Bay Path Elder Services. Christine's been here before. Bay Path is the co-sponsor with me of this series or with Myrick O'Connell of this series. Baypath, if you don't know of them, is the nonprofit that covers um, this and a number of other communities, 14 communities total in this area. Uh, and they are the funnel through which pretty much all state and federal programs for seniors run. They, they, <clears throat> one, of their originate, origi one of their original programs was Meals on Wheels, which, it, which for us, it, we, we can actually remember back when that started, but it seems like it's just been around forever. So she's going to talk about a program called the Frail Elder Waiver, which is a program available to folks who are, who are frail um, as an alternative to needing nursing home care or more significant care. But then I also wanted you to hear from Sharon Noli. Uh, Sharon uh, works with Summit Elder Care. Summit is a, a one of an unusual set of programs nationally developed really as an alternative to traditional um, me uh, Medicare, Medicaid uh, options for folks who are frail. The programs are called PACE programs, program, P-A-C-E, Programs for All-Inclusive Care for the Elderly, originally developed in San Francisco a lot of years ago uh, by folks in the Chinese community, actually, that really wanted to have an alternative for their seniors, who, as they got old, who were getting frail, who didn't speak English, many of whom just spoke Chinese and, you know, and had different language, different eating habits. So it was really designed to be an all-inclusive program for folks as an alternative to the system. That has a, was so successful, it evolved into a number of what I think are still called pilot programs in the country, although they're not pilots anymore. There are 40 or 50 of them. Um, um, Massachusetts, many states don't have any. Uh, we have several here in Massachusetts. So I wanted Sharon to talk to you about that as really a, a valuable alternative. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So <clears throat> as you know, uh, I always talk about my friends Frank and Mary and their kids Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And I tell people, you know, my typical couple, they, what they want to do is they want to stay in their house until they die. They want to be buried in the backyard. That's their goal in life. But then the question that comes up um, for, for them often, and we're going to use this as the example today, if what is, is what if Mary is not doing well? What if Mary, they've been successfully living in their home for a lot of years, but now Mary is really frail? And the last thing, of course, that she wants to do is to go to the nursing home. What she really wants to do is stay at home. I, I, I kind of joke that I spend most of my time uh, helping people figure out how to deal with the alternative in life that they never want, which is dealing with nursing home care. So we're going to talk about the really two major alternatives to that if Mary is getting frail. And they are the Frail Elder Waiver Program and the PACE Program. Summit Elder Care is a PACE program. So I want to start off by asking my friend Christine Alessandro to talk about um, the programs that run through Bay Path Elder Services. And as I say, Bay Path Elder Services is not a for-profit, they're a non-profit um, funded primarily by the Commonwealth and by the, United, by the federal government, mainly by the Commonwealth, to really be the folks who are helping you figure out how to get through to live in your house until you die. So, Christine. Thank you, Arthur. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well right after Thanksgiving. Everybody have enough to eat <laughs> today and on Thanksgiving. So thank you, Arthur, for that introduction. As Arthur said, I'm from Bay Path Elder Services. 
which is your aging services access point and your area agency on aging. We serve individuals over the age of 60, under the age of 60 with physical disabilities and caregivers and people like you. You don't have to be over 60 to, to benefit for our pro from our programs. We have many programs for many, many people. So we're gonna talk about the Frail Elder Waiver and here's our 14 communities as Arthur mentioned. A waiver is something that the federal government will grant to a state in order to waive some requirements of participation in a program. For example, if you wanted to get into a nursing home, there are eligibility criteria for that, but the federal government has allowed Massachusetts to waive some of the requirements so we can keep people at home, specifically those people who are frail. So to get on a frail elder waiver, you must be clinically and financially eligible, and I'll talk about your clinical eligibility, but you must be on Mass Health Standard. So your income less than $2,250 a month and your countable assets are less than $2,000. But what if you're married? Arthur's going to talk about that. There are ways to work with your income so that you may be financially eligible and your spouse remain with an income. So if you're married, the asset limit of the spouse who will not be going on Mass Health is, has to be below $123,600. This changes every year. And the home, if owner occupied, is considered exempt to a value of approximately $840,000, which is quite, quite a bit of money. So under the Frail Elder Waiver, we have a special program at Baypath in our home care program. It's called the Choices Program. The Choices Program allows you to be at home and not in a nursing home. It's for folks who are frail, who are at imminent risk for admission to a nursing home. To quali qualify for Choices, you have to be on the Frail Elder Waiver, and in addition, you must meet some other requirements. So to be eligible for choices, 60 years of age or older, and you're going to hear under PACE, you can be not 60, you can be 55 and eligible for the PACE program. So every program has different age eligibility requirements. You have to have what's called some functional impairments, which are needs, maybe personal care, homemaking, grocery shopping, and need criteria eligible for the home care program. We don't let anybody in. You have to have certain number of functional impairments. You have to meet the clinical eligibility criteria for nursing facility, be a Mass Health Standard member, and in need of a waiver service as determined by the ASAP, which is BayPath. So what's a waiver service? Home health is a home health aid is a waiver service. Personal care is a waiver service. There are many waiver services. But let's go back to skilled nursing eligibility. What do you need, what type of impairment do you need to get into a nursing home and have it paid for by Mass Health? If you want a private pay in a nursing home, the nursing home will take you. If you want Mass Health to pay for it, you have to meet certain criteria. And these can be pretty complicated. So you need to have, say, intravenous feeding, nasogastric feeding, nasopharyngeal aspiration and tracheostomy care, treatment or application of dressings, and we don't mean a Band-Aid, we mean things such as decubitus ulcers, administration of oxygen on a regular and continuous basis, skilled nursing observation, evaluation of an unstable medical condition, skilled nursing for management and evaluation of the care plan, or insertion of catheters. Now that sounds all really complicated and those are really debilitating issues that a body has to deal with that will need skilled nursing care. If you don't have any of those, we say, or you need a combination of at least three services, assistance with your activities of daily living, which is bathing, dressing, grooming, toileting, activities of daily living, nursing services provided at least three times a week, staff intervention required for selected types of behavior. Under this, this uh, number three, 
often deals with individuals who have dementia because their behaviors can be unpredictable. And oftentimes we see wandering, we see sundowning, and that is often what disrupts a caregiver enough to say we need placement in long-term care. And the, the last skilled service would be a physician ordered physical therapy, occupational therapy, or speech. So those are all skilled services. Those are what you need to get into a nursing home. So when I talked about the waiver and I said, what are waivered services? What can you get to stay in the home under the choices program if you have all those infirmities and you want to stay in your home? Well, you can get a variety of services, homemaking, personal care, respite, grocery shopping, home delivery of prepackaged medications, a supportive day program, Alzheimer's dementia coaching. There are a lot of services that you and your caregiver can get at home instead of going into a nursing home. So you can, as the spouse of someone who is on Medicaid, on the waiver, remain with your spouse in the home and keep a good portion of your assets. So how much, uh, how much service can you get in the Choices program? Well, you can get 168 hours of service per week, which is 24-7 care. We have the ability to provide 24-7 care in the home under the state definition in the Choices program. Two caveats to this. First of all, you have to have a backup plan with a caregiver. If something should happen, if a, an aide can't come and assist you for an eight-hour shift, somebody has to be there to cover. And that's an agreement between my agency and you and or your spouse. The second, and I always remind people of this, right now there's a huge worker shortage of individuals who provide personal care, homemaking, home health aid services, a really huge shortage, and we cannot guarantee that we could get someone 24-7. Nights are a problem, weekends are a problem. There are simply not enough people in this line of work, and the number of people needing services far, out, far exceeds that number, and it is not going to get any better. But if you are willing, you and your caregiver are willing, we will work with you to cobble a package together. You, the care recipient, is on Mass Health. It is paid for by the state and federal government. You get to retain assets. You get to remain at home, which is going to be the most important thing. And I always tell folks, know us before you need us. You're not going to need us tomorrow. But I hope you remember this program. If you or somebody else, might have that need at some point in the future. Just give us a call. So now I'd like to turn it back to Arthur. Just for, uh, just for a moment. Actually, I'll give you that mic. So now I want, now I want you to hear from Sharon Noli about this program of all, for all-inclusive care for the elderly, PACE or PACE. Um, but I, but I, I want to reemphasize what, what Christine just mentioned which is the key to all of this is to know what the services are before you need them. Um, I hit families, I mean literally every week, who are in crisis. Something just happened. Ma had a TIA. Some, there were problems that were getting worse and worse, and now finally things have come to a head. They don't know what to do. That is the worst possible time to be trying to figure all this out. You know, what you should do is talk, you know, you, you, you as seniors just have the right to just give Christine a call at, at Bay Path Elder Services anytime. Walk in, have them, have, or call, have them talk to you, have them find out what their programs are, get a sense of what they, what they do. Similarly with Summit Elder Care. Um, so, you know, we are, we are extremely fortunate in this area. We're one of, the, one of the parts of Massachusetts that is covered by a PACE program. Many parts are not. Many states, in the country have no PACE programs at all. This is a great alternative, but the way to know about it is before you need it, before you need it. But with that, with that, I want to talk, ask Sharon Noli to talk about this program and give you a sense of what it is, and then I'm going to finish by talking about some qualification 
issues and some of the differences in qualification between the two programs. Sharon. Thank you. So I'm going to give you this advanced tech course. That's forward. Okay. That's back. All right. That's all I know. <laughs> right forward, back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So again, I'm Sharon Noli. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay. And I work for Fallon Health, and Fallon Health has a program called Summit Elder Care, and it is a program of all-inclusive care for the elderly. And I gave each of you a brochure, and my telephone number and name is on the front of that brochure, in case you have any other questions. Okay. Oh, so I this forgot that. That was my third <laughs> thing. Point it to the laptop. <laughs> okay. So this program is just a little bit different because you have to be 55 years or older. So it's nice because it's a few years younger than some of the other programs throughout the United States. Um, and it is comprehensive medical and social model. We offer a full range, and, and I can get into exactly what we offer, but it's a full range and it's a program of all-inclusive care. We allow providers to respond to the u unique differences. Everybody has a different care plan. Each person, um, some people have more home care than others. Some people are going to the adult day health more than others. You know, each person has a different care plan. These are the um, locations of where the PACE programs are. Arthur had mentioned to you that there's a lot of states that don't have the PACE programs, and in the state of Massachusetts, there's eight of these programs, so we're one of eight. The other locations are in Springfield, and there's five in Boston. So what is, so an, an overview of the PACE program is that we have primary care physicians at the site, so you do change from the primary care physician that you have, and you, you, once you're in the program, you have a primary care physician that's right there at the site. We also do physical, occupational therapy, and speech therapy right at the sites, and I'll, get, I'll actually show you where the sites are. We have an adult day health. People are able to go there during the day, have a hot meal, do some activities, some stimulation, some socialization. We also provide hospital care, meals, we, can, we, we also can do meals similar to Meals on Wheels, but it's a little bit different. Emergency services, prescription and drugs, really all of what insurance pays for. Medical specialty services, we have a dentist that comes in, we have a podiatrist also that comes in. We also have social workers right at the site. There could be three or four social workers. They usually have about 50 people per person. And of course, the home care, so we can help in the home with grocery shopping, cooking, cleaning, you know, help with personal care, that type of thing. We can provide transportation back and forth to the site. We have a wheelchair van in all locations that, um, that helps, you know, obviously if somebody wants to get a ride, but most people really do take up the transportation. So again, it's the adult day health, it's home care, and it's also inpatient services. So we have two locations in Worcester. We're actually building right now. We used to be on East Mountain Street. Has anybody ever been by that location? The one on East Mountain Street? We were there for 22 years and now we're building a new site on Grove Street. It's on 288 Grove Street and it will be just like the other sites. We're also, have, we have another site on Grafton Street in Worcester and it's, it's right around uh, Route 20 and we have a site in Lemonster, Lowell, in Springfield, and we moved the Charlton site to Webster. So that's where all the six sites are. The one closest is really the one that will be in um, either Grafton Street or on Grove Street. Yes? Um, no, because at when, the site... When you're, when you're answering, can you repeat the question and then answer just yes. so the camera gets Is the health center similar to like a... Yeah. We, um, at each location, there is a health center, but it's also an adult day health and rehab, and then, of course, the social workers are there, the physicians are there, so it's all-inclusive. Did I answer the question? Yes, it is. Yes. So, again, this is, we, we sort of made little circles um, just showing you all the different aspects that we talked about of the program. So we all work together as a team. They actually meet 
five days a week. They meet in the morning, and they go over any changes, say if somebody has fallen in the evening or if they're in the emergency or if they're in rehab. They go over what's going on with that particular person's care plan, and they make decisions on whether there should be changes. Like take, for instance, if somebody had fallen and they were in uh, rehab, when they do go home, they need more physical therapy. They need to maybe possibly be on different um, medications so the physician is involved. They may need more home care, so home care is involved. Um, so all the aspects of the, the care plan have to be changed, and they all work together as a team. So again, they meet five days a week. And so it's nice because it's, many times it's broken up. If someone is not in a program like this, they're dealing possibly with the VNA, their doctor, the, the rehab, home care, and there's, it, in a sense, it can be sort of broken up and confusing, but as with a program like this, you're dealing with many aspects, but they all really know what's going on, so it makes it easier for the caregiver. We talked a little bit about this, but we do have one thing that I didn't really mention was the dining services, um, because when people come to the program, they're able to eat right there, and if there's any any certain kind of meals that they eat, or if there's any allergies, then we just make sure that um, we know about that. Many people that are in this program, they have many different acute problems, and so I'm just gonna give you a for instance. They could have heart disease or respiratory disease, or they could be a diabetic and needing insulin and having trouble with the insulin. They, ha they need to, again, have Three ADLs, we, we talked a little bit about that already. So um, again, just dependencies on possibly walking or bathing, dressing, toileting, those types of things. So is there a single case manager Is there a, so you're wondering if there's one case manager per person? Or, or yes, yes, so we talked a little bit about the social worker and having 50 participants each. So the single point of contact usually is the social worker, unless you're dealing with an issue of a, the physician is involved, then it would be just directly to the physician or PT. Yes. Um, again, there can be no cost to this program. It can be paid for through Mass Health and Medicare, and that's again through the Frail Elder Waiver, with the income being less than $2,250 a month and then showing less than 2,000 in assets, and that's in a sense where Arthur gets involved. <laughs> so the financial guidelines are really actually determined by Mass Health, and it does include the gross income. So we're one of the largest PACE programs in, we're the largest PACE program in New England, and again, we're one of eight in the state of Massachusetts. And we have six centers. And this shows you an example. I'm just going to kind of point. You can see the Springfield location, Webster, two in Worcester, Lemonster, and then the, the latest one is the one that's in Lowell. And that's been there a couple of years now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll just take that. Yes. So I think that uh, Sharon was putting it mildly when she said, for folks who are going through this, sometimes this is really confusing. I mean, this is really confusing. The, 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 there are a bunch of different programs. They're all over the map. Oftentimes, if you're trying to figure out, the folks from Bay Path Elder Services can help you with that. Uh, a, a lot of folks I recommend hire, hire some people called geriatric care managers. These are people who specifically have decided that their goal in life is to, serve, to help people who are seniors try to figure this stuff out, but it's very, very complicated. The services are all over the place. One of the nice things about PAYS is that once you're involved in Summit Elder Care, that's it. You know, they, you, you're, you've got everything being coordinated in one place, even though you're not institutionalized, even though you're not in a nursing home, even though you're at home. So it's, it's, it's really an option that you want to consider. Now I want to talk a little bit about qualification if you're Frank and Mary. So if you're Frank and Mary, so, so let's pretend that these are their assets. There's Frank and Mary and they've got a house that's worth 400,000. Uh, they've got bank accounts worth 200. Frank's got an IRA worth two, or two, with 200. Frank's got income of 2,500 from Social Security. Mary's getting half of his, 1,250. 
So the basic qualification for both of these programs is the same financially. Um, to the extent that you are, that you are applying, th these are what I'll call joint, uh, this is a joint, these are joint mass health really and Medicare programs. Both programs are participating. To the extent that mass, you're qualifying for mass health, you need to show that you're poor. You need to show that you have assets of less than $2,000. The house is an exempt, at, excuse me, the house is an exempt asset and the applicant's income has to be less than $2,250 per month and that's a gross number. So suppose you're Frank and Mary. Remember with those assets, with, with those assets. What you would do in that case if you were Frank and Mary, uh, we're gonna talk about each one of the programs. If you were, first of all, suppose Mary were trying to qualify for the Frail Elder Waiver, or the FEW, F-E-W, and both of them were alive. What Mary could do, she could shift all of her assets to Frank. There is no look back period between spouses. Oftentimes people, have this sense that in order to qualify for mass health, they can't give things away because they have to wait five years. That's true unless you're giving it to your spouse. I always tell single people one of your great options qualifying for mass health is to get married. Nobody ever does that, but it's just, it's always an option. So you can, in this case, Mary can shift everything to Frank. Um, the limit on Frank's assets, as opposed to Mary's, is $123,600. And Frank can have unlimited income and the income of Frank's doesn't count if Mary's trying to qualify and they're married. So what Frank could do in this case, he could keep the house, there's no limit on the value of the house, uh, if it's Frank's house. Um, Frank would keep, say, $100,000 and use the other $300,000 to buy an annuity, an annuity of a certain kind, an annuity that calls for equal monthly payments over a term that is shorter than his actuarial life expectancy. If he does that, he is thereby converting an asset, which is countable, into an income stream which is not. Frank is allowed to have infinite income even though Mary is qualifying for, for the frail elder waiver. So the day after Frank buys that annuity, um, um, Mary's going to be able to qualify for mass health. One caveat here is that if Frank buys that annuity, which now has these monthly payments that are coming in every month, and then Mary qualifies for the frail elder waiver and then Frank dies, Mass Health has a lien on the remaining annuity payments. And that's the reason why, in this case, we would always recommend that Frank buy a short annuity so that he gets all of his money back. Because the day after Mary qualifies for, for Mass Health, Frank can have unlimited assets. He can't have more than $123,600 by the day that Mary qualifies for Mass Health. But the next day, he can win the lottery. So he can structure things so that he's got these annuity payments that are coming in, they can be really big annuity payments as long as his assets remain below the magic number, 123,006, before the day that Mary qualifies for Mass Health. After that, he can have as, many, as much in assets as he wants. But suppose Frank has died. Suppose Frank has died. In that case, what does Mary do in order to qualify? Can she qualify? And the answer to that um, is, is uh, yes. Remember, in that, that case, now she owns all the assets, the bank account, or, or she now has Frank's IRA, and she now has all the cash, but her income just jumped, right, because Frank died, so now Mary is getting Frank's Social Security check, $2,500 a month. Well, in that situation, what Mary's gonna need to do, remember, Mary needs to show that she has less than $2,000 in countable assets. She has these three options. One of them is really bad. Uh, she can buy an annuity with the money, it, just like the annuity that we just described for Frank, thereby changing her asset into an income stream. But in that case, that annuity is simply going to increase the uh, amount of the deductible that she's gonna have to pay to mass health. If she is over, if she has assets that are over $2,250, and I, I know this was a number that was mentioned earlier, if she has, excuse me, if she has income that is more than $2,250 per month, in the case of the frail elder waiver, she's going to be paying a significant deductible, a significant deductible. That deductible is gonna be equal to her income minus, we'll say, around $500. So in the case, in Mary's case here, where her income is about $2,500 a month, for her to qualify for this program, uh, if she were single, um, she would need to basically pay a monthly deductible of about $2,000. So this program would only make sense for Mary if she had really big home care costs, really big home care costs. 
But then you'd say to yourself, well, how could she pay for those home care costs? Well, the way she'd do it would be by putting her money into something called a D4C pooled trust. We're gonna talk about those a little bit more in the spring when we do some, uh, another presentation that we do here. But I just wanna kind of just mention that if you wanna learn about D4C pooled trust, you can just Google them, Google the term pooled trust, P-O-O-L-E-D, pooled trust. But Mary can basically shift all of her money into this pooled trust the next day she can qualify for the frail elder waiver. Her only other option uh, when she's single is to give her money away and wait five years. And once again, this is the kind of thing you can't do at the last minute, is give your money away and wait five years. So that to the extent that Mary is single and wants to be planning ahead for, for, to qualify for this program, she needs, to she needs to plan way ahead and know that, that to the extent that she wants to have assets that she doesn't have to spend down before she can qualify, she's gonna to have to give them away and wait five years. What about qualifying for PACE? It's a little bit different. But as was mentioned, first of all, the age um, restriction is different. Second, though, the asset deal is different. Once again, assume that these are the assets. There's the house, Frank and Mary are now both alive. Uh, they've got their house, they've got bank accounts, they've got Frank's IRA, and there's their income. In, in, the pay, in the case of pays, Frank can shift all of his assets to Mary, or excuse me, Mary can shift all of the assets to Frank, and Frank can just keep all the assets, because there is, is no asset cap, if, I'm, if I am correct, in the PACE program. So you can shift all your assets to your spouse, and the next day you can qualify for PACE. Um, so um, so that one, that's pretty straightforward. What about the case where Frank has died and Mary now wants to qualify? Um, well, in that case, um, Mary has a couple of alternatives. One is that she could still transfer this money to a pooled trust. These are trusts that are uh, run by charities for the benefit of, the, of, of, of elderly and disabled people. You can transfer infinite amounts of money to them, um, and those transfers are not subject to the usual five-year look-back period. Or, she could simply transfer her assets to her kids. In the case of the PACE program, there is no look back period regarding transfers to your kids or regarding transfers to anybody else. So you can transfer your assets out and the next day you can qualify for these programs, right? So that is a, for many folks, is a gigantic difference. Now I'll mention one other difference though, and I wanna confirm this with Sharon. Once Mary has qualified, there is this asset question. As I mentioned to you, in the case of Mary's qualifying for the frail elder waiver, once she had qualified, she'd have to pay a big deductible from her monthly income before she could get the benefit. How does that work in the case of PACE? If she has income that's over $2,250 a month. If her gross income is over $2,250 a month and she shows less than $2,000 in assets, then whatever the income is, I'm gonna just say, let's say for instance- say $2,500 a month. $2,500 a month. Yeah. Then they deduct $542, so $2,500 minus $542, and what the remainder is, is the cost of the summit program. So it's the same, and that, so it's the yes. same as the frail elder waiver then. You yes. basically take her income, you subtract this fairly small deductible, and the rest of it is what is going to the, to the, to, to summit, to the, it, yes. to summit elder care. Yes. So you would, and once again, you'd say to yourself in that case, well, where would Mary get the money in order to get that, to do that? Well, as we just mentioned though, she had $400,000 that she could give away to Peter, Paul, and Mary, Jun or Mary Jr. and the next day qualify for the PACE program. So from then on in, if she's qualifying for PACE, if she's earning $2,500 a month, she's gonna pay $2,000 a month for this program, but there's this other pile of $400,000 that can be used on her behalf in order to, to basically pay for all of her, for, to pay for the insurance and to pay for the taxes, et cetera, et cetera. So she could structure things through the PACE program fairly, fairly quickly without even having to use this separate entity, this D4C pool trust. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. So the bottom line, the first, of, very simple, um, you have to figure out your options before you need them, right? If, if, or let me put it this way, you can figure them out at the last minute, but first, you're gonna make your lawyer crazy because that's just what happens. You're gonna call your lawyer, you're gonna say, what am I gonna do here? And we're gonna to have to try to unwind things and try to move things around quickly in order for you to qualify for these various programs. And you're not gonna have seen them yet. So look, 
You're, you know, if, now let me put, uh, now, not everybody here is over 65, but many of you look, you're getting older, right? So you've got time, go visit. Go visit the Summit Elder Care. Visit one of their facilities so you have a sense of it. Talk to the folks at Bay Path Elder Services and get a sense of what their programs are, just so that you know that they're there and so that they know you. So that if it's an emergency and somebody fell and had a stroke and they're in the hospital and now they're trying to figure out what to do, you can actually call people you know and say, so how would this work out, okay? Uh, thank you very much. Any questions? Any questions on any of this? I know we covered a lot of material and we'll be around for a while afterwards in case anybody has individual questions. I'm just gonna mention one other thing, um, which is the only issue with Summit Elder Care is that their locations, the locations at which they, do, they administer a lot of this stuff, are fairly far away, right? The, the closest one is either from here is either in Worcester or in, or in Lemonster. But I, I am, so that's why I am, I am saying to you, as I have said to Sharon, I want to be advocating to get one of these closer to here. There should be one of these sites here in the boroughs area. Um, they, they, as you notice from their map, their catchment area comes this far east. This would be a great site for them, and it would just make it more convenient for us, and hopefully that's where this is going to go in the future. If there are no other questions, yes, sir? Uh, in terms of services, uh, which is comparable, PACE versus PayPal? How they work? When you compare the services, and you're com you're, uh, how, how do they compare in terms of what, in, in terms of what is on offer? Can, can I just answer that? Um, I think each person is different. So what, what I suggest to do is to actually talk to Bay Path and talk to Summit Elder Care. And then you have, to, you have all your questions, and you have to make up the decision on which one is best, depending on the program. And I, and Bay Path has more than just this particular program. They have several programs. So you would look into their programs, and then you look into the PACE program. And some people even look into assisted living. So, you know, there's a lot of different things you can look into. Some people just want home care. They have to weigh everything and make a decision. And then we can steer you in the right direction, figuring out exactly what the needs are. Right? Yep. And I think one of the other differences is when you join Summit Elder Care, you get all of your medical care through Summit. So if, if you have Dr. John Smith, and you have been going to Dr. Smith forever, you may not want to give up Dr. Smith. That's, that's what we find with some of the other programs as well, that you don't want to give up your doctor. But I agree, find out what's, you know, the, the pros and cons of each. You know, we each have pros and cons, and what does best does fit your needs. Yeah, and, and, and by the way, I think your question really speaks to one of the kind of fundamental questions that my clients are facing all the time. The, the reason to know about these folks ahead of time is that what you don't know ahead of time is what your physical condition is going to be, what your physical and mental condition is going to be, and they vary all over the place. So to say which services, you know, how do you compare the services, it's really about how do you compare the services given your problem, right? So, so once, once you know all the players, then when the problem shows up and you know what that is, whether it is a, whether it is, you've had a TIA, whether it is Alzheimer's, whether, whether, whether you've got, a, you've got a, a diabetes issue, then you can be talking to them sensibly about, because you know the players, what is the package that you have that could, that could work for me? And I think that's, that's the goal of this exercise. And that's why, by the way, I really appreciate the fact that, that Northbrook Cable is willing to film these and to, and to show them because so, so often the folks who, who benefit from these programs are people who are not here. They're not here because they're taking care of somebody at home, right? And they can't get out. So to give them the opportunity to watch it through Northbrook Cable is really, really important. So I really appreciate that. And I think one of the other great things is you have options. You know, a, some, a PACE program is not in every state. So in Massachusetts, there are a variety of options for your care as you age, as you stay in home. And I think that's fabulous. Other questions? If not, thank you very much. And uh, this is our last presentation for this year, so happy holidays, and we'll see you in the spring of 2019. Th oh, could I have a round of applause for my wonderful guests, <laughs> whom I really appreciate. Thank you, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate it, thank you very much. Good to see you all. <laughs> <laughs>